Today I will be explaining level negative 94 of the back rooms, aka Cinemotion. This is a secret counterpart to the famous original level 94, and I know most of y'all have no idea that this existed because I didn't until like two weeks ago. Someone on Discord told me about it. Anyways, if you want to join the Brugley Discord, click the top link in the description. But this negative level is very interesting, and I think you'll enjoy how it stacks up against the original level 94. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the explanation, shall we? Level negative 94 in the back rooms has been given the classification of variable difficulty because it splits between two main parts, which are completely different and they have different safeties. The two parts are known as sectors and the first sector of level negative 94 takes the appearance of a cinematic dreamscape made up of hills that seem to be made out of fake grass. On these grassy hills lie identical repeated small houses made entirely out of cardboard. There are a few differences off the bat between this level and the regular 94. First of all, the grass here is darker in color. It takes the appearance of a dull brown color, whereas the grass in the regular 94 is green and vibrant. Also, the houses here are made out of cardboard and you can't explore them, you can't open them. And the houses on regular 94 are not made out of cardboard and you can explore them. Anyways, it's unknown if there's anything inside these houses or why they're there because you can't explore them at all. But what is apparent is that this level is actually extremely tiny. In fact, it seems to be a scale model of a town. This means that you yourself are just a few centimeters tall to fit the proportions of this town thing. You'll see more what I mean later, but just know that you're very, very small here, and this might have some effects later on. This sector of the level gives every wanderer that travels here a weird vision effect. Essentially, it makes your eyes and field of view look as if you're seeing everything through a VHS tape. All your surroundings and everything will be grainy and distorted, as well as all photographs being taken on this level, they'll have the same effect. Prolonged exposure to this effect could lead to some long-term eye problems after you leave, so beware of that, don't stay here that long. But another weird thing with the level is the lighting. It seems to come from the sky, and it's enigmatic in nature. It's not a sun or anything. Like I said, it's a scale model of a little city, so that means that the lights and the sun are just studio lights on the ceiling of the studio. The lights will randomly flick on and off at an unnatural and arbitrary interval. The flickering causes many people to have derealization and distorted perception of their surroundings, considering it doesn't stay dark or light for that long. And it also might cause people to hallucinate shadows or creatures off in the distance. So between the flickering of the studio lights and the VHS static in your eyes, it's very hard to explore the level safely. Interestingly enough, the effects get worse as you get to the outside of this sector and the outside of the houses. The hills and the houses are loosely connected via small paths carved into the ground. These paths are what you're gonna have to use to walk to the different parts of the level. And the entire thing here, everywhere, smells like fresh paint. Like that smell you get when you walk right into a room that just got painted, the entire level smells like that. And like I said, it is because the level is a small town that's been painted. The level does seem to have a quote unquote day and night cycle, and that's because at nighttime, the studio lights above go completely off and they stay off for a few hours. The entire place feels like a movie set from an old stop motion movie, and essentially that's what it is. All of it seems so uncanny, you know, even down to the grass being fake and, and spray painted and the houses being cardboard. Nothing is real but you and you're forced to explore the entire place. Going to the edge of these hills and houses and paths, you will find a large green screen that spans out the entire border of this sector. You can't see the green screen from far away, you only notice it when you get up close. But in order to get to the second sector, you have to pass through a hole in this green screen. Typically, they'll be where the corners meet. Once you find it, you gotta jump through it and you'll be in sector two, but more on that in a second. As far as entities in Sector 1 goes, it's pretty interesting. You see, in the daytime, there are fake cardboard mini figurine cutouts of Backroom's entities placed randomly along the hills, the houses, and all the stuff here. These entities can be anything from smilers to skin stealers to hounds or death moths, any of those. 
and in the daytime, they're just 2D lifeless cardboard cutouts. However, at nighttime, that's when they seem to come to life, and they shift into real versions of themselves, and they animate. They keep their 2D appearance, however, they're flesh and blood still, and they will pursue wanderers if seen. They move around like stop-motion animation instead of how they normally do, and it all adds to this very unnatural and uncanniness of the entire place. And don't let the 2D aspect fool you, they are just as dangerous as their normal 3D counterparts. The best way to avoid these entities is to destroy as many cutouts during the daytime as you can, that way they can't reanimate. Either way, this sector is quite dangerous due to the aforementioned effects on the vision, the 2D entities, the strange layout, and all that stuff. But if you find yourself at the edge of the sector and jump to the green screen, you'll be able to explore Sector 2, which is much safer. Sector 2 has been classified as a Class 1 difficulty and is very safe and very stable, pretty much because it has no entity count and it just doesn't have a dangerous environment. This part of the level resembles an art studio, but it's at an enormous scale that sprawls out forever and ever. You'll still be a tiny shrunken version of yourself, just a few centimeters tall, when you're traveling through Sector 2, so it's going to be a lot harder to explore because it's going to be like a little miniature thing trying to explore a large thing. The rooms in the studio have green screens and ladders and weird lights and paintbrushes, and overall it looks like an art studio, and the rooms themselves are usually large cube-shaped. Now, this part of the level can cause you to suffer from blurry vision because you're so small, it's going to be hard to see things far away. So in order to do that, you're going to have to walk towards wherever you want to see. It's unknown how big the studio is because it's impossible to explore the entire thing as a small person. But what we do know is that it's safe, and the only entities here seem to be facelings that are regularly human-sized. These facelings are regularly human-sized and they're not shrunk down like you are, so it's unknown if they know you're there, but it's recommended not to touch them or act them on or yell at them because they might step on you or something. But besides the facelings and their maybeness of stepping on you, this place is safe. It's just a huge empty studio where you're a tiny shrunken human. So I've gone over Sector 1, and I've gone over Sector 2, but how does one enter the level in general? I guess I'll go over that too. The only known entrance was somewhere on the regular level 94. We're not exactly sure where, but it is there somewhere, and that's where the strange tie from the regular one to this negative level has. We have no idea where it's at. But in order to exit these fake hills, you're gonna have to make your way to the border where the green screen is and jump into Sector 2. Once you're in Sector 2, you have to search around the entire area till you find a small door that is proportioned for how small you are. The door will just be like an inch or two tall, and you'll just be like a couple centimeters tall. You'll know when you see it. Anyways, find this door, go through it, and you'll be sent out to level negative 30. This might take some time to find the exit, since you can't move very fast, since you're one centimeter tall. But either way, once you find it, you'll be out. That was level negative 94, the counterpart to the famous regular level 94. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. It was goofy, but serious enough to, you know, make it a good backrooms level. I really like how uncanny it is. Some of my most favorite levels are the uncanny ones. Anyways, let me know what other levels that I should go over, whether they be negative or enigmatic or regular. I'll be glad to go over them. And check out my Spoogly channel, which is my third channel for video essays and many morbid documentaries and that sort of thing. If you enjoy my content, please leave a like. It really does help the channel out. I appreciate and love every single one of you. And make sure you tell somebody that you love them because life is too short not to. Anyways, with all that said, have a great day and I'll see you later.